Hey church family, it's Jordan and I'm here with our Monday morning devotional. Uh, we're going to be continuing in our series on Christianese uh, words that uh, we often hear inside of church, inside of Christian communities especially, but may not have a lot of meaning to those outside of our faith and outside of a, a Christian upbringing or a, a church background. Um, and I think sometimes these are words that also lose some of their meaning to us just in the fact that we are so accustomed to them. They've become common and they have sort of lost some of the significance that I think they can hold. And so part of the goal with Christianese is to help bring them sort of back to mind, uh, back in the forefront of our thoughts. We really understand uh, what is intended behind these particular terms or phrases uh, we'll look at scripture this morning. We're going to be going to uh, Deuteronomy 32. We're also going to go uh, back to Romans 3. We've been there in a couple of our devotional series, and we'll be uh, back there this morning. So Deuteronomy 32 and Romans 3, if you want to uh, mark those in uh, your Bible. A quick reminder before we jump in, also we have Fall Festival this coming Saturday, 1 to 4 p.m., uh, so if you are in the South Pierce County uh, area, Tacoma, Spanaway, Puyallup, uh, Graham, uh, any place south of us, Roy, Yelm, etc., um, uh, we would just love to have you come visit us at our church uh, between 1 and 4. Uh, we've got uh, just a, a fun community uh, event happening, and so it's really open to everyone. Uh, if you are a member of our church family, uh, be inviting uh, anyone who you come in contact with, especially young people. So. Uh, let's pray and we'll jump into uh, our Christianese word for the day. Uh, God, we thank you that uh, you give us uh, your word to give us clarity, to give us context, to give us perspective, um, not only on uh, you, but also uh, on uh, this world that we live in. Uh, we're not uh, navigating our lives blindly and without a, a map and a path to follow. And so I pray that uh, just as we discuss your word and some of the words uh, that uh, you use, uh, that we would have a greater perspective of who you are uh, and that we would have a better perspective of who we are as well. Uh, we ask these things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. So uh, the word that we're going to talk about today is righteous or righteousness. Um, and we're following up, we're sort of progressing through um, some of these uh, words in essentially a sequence. Uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've talked about a few different words for sin. We talked about sin, we talked about iniquity, we talked about transgression, and the different concepts that they evoke. Uh, this idea of coming up short, of missing the mark, uh, sort of is encapsulated in sin, we, we sort of miss who we were called to be as image bearers of God when we sin. Uh, when we have iniquity and when we have transgression, we uh, willfully violate and rebel and cross a line and uh, intend to do harm. We are twisted and corrupted in our practices. That's sort of what the fullness of sin means. And that's an ugly thing to look at in the mirror. Um, and many of us, we came to saving faith in Jesus Christ because we confronted that at some point in our lives. And it's important, I think, for us to recognize that that is what we are coming out of. We have a newness of identity, but we also have to recognize that we need to put to death things that are aligned uh, with sin and are aligned with iniquity and with transgression. And that uh, it is important for us to understand because it also is um, um, emphasized and made more significant when we consider who God is. And again, this idea that we were made to be um, in his image. So if you go to me, go with me to Deuteronomy 32, uh, we're going to look at the uh, verse uh, 32, uh, 4 and 5, um, and uh, we will uh, go from there to Romans 3. So uh, Deuteronomy 32, 4, the rock, his work is perfect for all his ways are justice, a God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. Uh, they have dealt corruptly with him. They are no longer his children because they are blemished. They are crooked and twisted generation. Um, this again is this idea. There's uh, in some translations in the NIV, for instance, they use the word righteous in verse four. Um, but it's this idea that God is something um, outside of and beyond sin. And our sin is a, a way of dealing corruptly with a good father, with a righteous father who is faithful, who is um, without uh, any uh, thing that comes up short in his character. Uh, yesterday in our service on worship, in our teaching time on worship uh, on Sunday morning, 
we sort of talked about the worthiness of God, and certainly his righteousness should come into mind. Now, if you contrast that with Romans 3, uh, which is written by Paul, uh, one of the uh, great missionaries of the Christian faith, wrote a lot of the New Testament letters that we have today, um, in verses uh, 10, 11, and 12, uh, we'll read those together. You'll get a perspective on what our sin, our iniquity, and our transgression do uh, to us. Again, you, you heard in Deuteronomy 32 how we deal with a righteous and faithful God in a crooked manner, or in a way perhaps that you might call uh, iniquity uh, is sort of the, the term for crooked there. But so do, uh, Romans 3 uh, verses uh, 10, 11, and 12. As it is written, none is righteous, no, not one. Uh, Paul is talking about mankind. No one understands. No one seeks God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. In sort of this twistedness of our character and our transgression and our sin, we become worthless. Uh, we do not do good. Um, uh, we are um, uh, agents of death. Uh, if you sort of read on, it talks about how we sort of bring death uh, through what we do and through what we say. And so this is the contrast, right? Uh, sin, iniquity, transgression, uh, they take something of immense worth, uh, us as the image bearers of God, and it corrupts it, it perverts it, and makes us worthless, it makes us uh, rebels, it makes us people who intend to bring death. Uh, we do wrong to God uh, by our sin. Uh, God, in his righteousness, and his kindness, and his love, uh, we, we wrong, we in intentionally are trying to inflict harm. And again, I think there's some theological barriers that would draw around our ability to do that, but we are essentially a, 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 an affront to God and in, in, in who he is and who he created us to be in our lack of righteousness. The, the question then is, what is uh, it to be righteous? What does it mean to be a righteous individual, a man or a woman who is, is of righteous character? And, and righteousness is uh, about having a, a noble and upright and faithful and good a standard of living, and, and as defined by God himself. It, it, we, we talk about righteousness in our thoughts. Um, we talk about righteousness in our heart, in our character, in our, our expressions, and in our inner desires, and in our inner heart. Um, that has a chance to be righteous. It has a chance to be moral and justified and to be noble and to be good. Um, our actions also are things that uh, uh, can be righteous. What you do uh, what you say uh, can be righteous. It can be something that is a force of good. It is noble. It is just. It is fair. It is kind. It is generous. All of these things are encapsulated in this idea of being righteous. And, and these different ways of expressing ourselves um, uh, show righteousness um, or they don't. And again, as scripture says, no one is righteous, not even one. And so this is the state of mankind uh, without God stepping in and intervening and doing something to uh, save us uh, from our own iniquity. Uh, because of our own worthlessness, uh, we are, are justifiably condemned. We'll talk about that in the next few weeks. And so my challenge for you this morning, again, not necessarily the most uplifting thought, but I think many of you sort of know what comes in, in the next few Christian words will sort of be progressing from here. Uh, but in sort of self-contemplation, I would say, um, I, I would encourage you just to think a little bit about um, how do you view yourself? How do you view yourself uh, before you were saved and after you were saved? Can you recognize sin and iniquity and transgressions against God and against his people? Um, sometimes, again, we sin, even as believers. Um, can you understand the significance, then, of righteousness? That God is righteous, that he is holy and pure and without fault in the way that he thinks and acts and the way that he speaks, the way that he um, uh, expresses himself. Can you understand the significance of God's righteousness? Can you understand the significance of our unrighteousness uh, in and of ourselves? Um, again, I think this should be something that leads us to a place of worship. Uh, we talked about this morning how God's characteristics make him worthy of worship, but I think part of proper worship is to be humbled ourselves. Ryan shared about that in his, his testimony yesterday, how uh, sometimes we forget that worship is about humbling ourselves and going to our knees or even laying prostrate before the Lord as an expression of, of his righteousness um, and our need for something uh, to free us from our unrighteousness and the just condemnation we receive for that. So I hope that does encourage and challenges you. 
Um, I hope that uh, it gives you some thoughts and some conversations that you can have as you uh, talk with unbelievers and people who are unsaved about why God is so worthy of being followed and admired and honored and why we need a savior. Um, I'll look forward to seeing you all at midweek on Thursday night at 6 and then again together uh, this uh, fall festival on the weekend 1 to 4 p.m. Should be a really uh, awesome time as a family. Bye everyone.